Hello, everybody out there. Hi, out out there. <laughs> They're out there. It's the, the it's, truth is out there. It's out there. Um, welcome to uh, uh, Piffle Year Two in Review. Year Two in Review. It's our second clip show. That means. That means we're trying to fill space because we're not ready to come back yet with real live episodes. But we do have something very special. It, this is going to be, this is pretty cool. We've, um, so we're, we're in the midst right now of writing and prepping for the season three premiere on October 24th at the Comedy Cafe Berlin. That's right. ComedyCafeBerlin.com. A Saturday. A uh, Saturday. We're prime time now, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Um, in the meantime... We, we've got this special thing lined up for you. This is a clip show. Um, based, basically, we, we went through um, a lot of the episodes from, from the past year and right. pulled out uh, some, some great sketches from, from all of those, those episodes. Exactly. So what you're going to hear now are a collection of... of Our favorite... I mean, I, I do want to say... I, not, it's like you, you love all your children equally. <laughs> But some of them do a little better in school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then some, some are like, better at sports. So you just feel a little bit, whatever. So these are, you know, we also, we only have so much time. We exactly. can't play all the sketches and it would also defeat the purpose. But this is, a, this is like what we consider the best of the best, our favorite sketches from the past year and, and a couple of like extra little fun things. Uh, that we we thought it would be fun to throw throw in this uh, show that it's a it's a, a year in review it's a look back at season two of Piffle year two in review it rhymes so I had to do it right yeah you had to what's what's first up Josh first up is uh, from uh, episode episode Epper, episode uh, episode episode you can't say it right now I can't do it anymore don't do it um, episode twelve uh, which was all about travel uh, ha- featured guests uh, Harry McAllister and Daniel Lewis Faza of the Berlin Comedy Podcast. Um, and uh, musical guests uh, Golub and the Seagull, um, and this sketch. There, there are a couple people that regularly come to our shows that um, say that this is their favorite sketch of ours. So we had to throw it in there. Naturally. We, we had to throw it. In. I, I do think uh, it is definitely up there. It's also, I think, it's one of the most concise sketches we've done. Yes, which definitely helps it. Absolutely. Um, this, written by Noah. Um, <laughs> That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is this is rollerblading from episode eleven. Enjoy. Hey, it's uh, really cool. We could all take times from our busy schedules and finally get together like this. Yeah, I haven't seen you guys in like a year. This is going to be a great spring break reunion. Old college friends back together again for a week of fun and debauchery. Oh, oh hell yeah! yeah. Oh, I know. I can't wait to throw on my rollerblades and show you guys what I've been working on. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, Len. You've been you've been rollerblading, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I hear the beach is gonna be amazing, white sand, and nothing but smoking hot broads. Hell yeah! All I need is a margarita and a beach towel. You know what I mean? Oh, oh hell yeah! yeah. Oh, I know. I hear there's a pretty sweet boardwalk for rollerblading too. <laughs> You, you serious? You actually gonna do that? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so uh, uh, what's the itinerary? We got like a program for this week or something, right? Uh, yeah, well, there's a six and pub crawl. I thought we could all do that tomorrow. Ten bucks, all you can drink. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah! Oh, hell yeah! And tonight there's a rollerblading tour. <laughs> yeah, see, Len, I don't think that's gonna happen. Ah, oh, no, it's cool. I booked it already. What, you, you gotta be kidding me. No way, dudes. I didn't bring any rollerblades with me. I don't even own rollerblades. All good, guys. I got spare pairs. <laughs> Look, Len, uh, I don't know that we really want to do this, though. Yeah, but come on, guys. It's a rollerblading tour of the city where you, re- where you wear rollerblades on your feet and you go on a tour through the city. Oh, hell no, man. No, no, way, no, man. Way. no way. No way. No, no, no. No, no. no. Well, get out of here with that rollerblading crap. What's gotten into you, bro? Look, this is who I am, guys. We're not in college anymore, okay? I'm a different person now. If you can't handle it, if you can't accept me for me, then just let me out of the car now. Oh, come on, lad. I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, you know, we're just breaking your balls. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, Len. Hey, it's okay. 
but seriously, let me out of the car. I want a rollerblade. Really? Yeah, man, this caged bird needs to fly. That would actually be pretty fucking Yeah, sweet. yeah, man. Let's get wasted and watch Len rollerblade to Myrtle Beach. Oh, oh hell, hell yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah, indeed. Oh, oh hell, hell yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was Harry McAllister and uh, Daniel Lewis Vesa helping us out in that sketch. Noah, of course, uh, as Len. <laughs> yeah. The, the rollerblader. Bro. Um, that was, uh, that was, a, that was a fun sketch. Actually, the, the other sketch from that episode, um, with oh, Harry, t- which a lot of people didn't realize was a sketch. I mean, yeah. not a lot, but a- enough that it's funny. Yeah. That's uh, exactly, I think what we were looking for in that yeah, sketch too. It, the, the sketch that is definitely not about 9-11. <laughs> um, we encourage you to listen to episode 11. <laughs> um, if you want to hear that one, we're not going to put it in this show. Um, and what do we have next, Noah? Uh, we got a sketch called Everyone's Bananas, Josh. Which episode? This is the film episode, episode 15. Oh, man, such a good Chris episode. With Chris Davis and, and John O'Reilly from uh, Crazy Bastard Hot Sauce, or Crazy Bastard Sauce. Right. Um, this, uh, this and episode, the Great Danes. Musical and, and, guests, and, and, Great Danes. Musical guests, Great Danes. Um, this sketch is, uh, is really bananas. <laughs> this is definitely uh, one of the... I just I think in terms of all around timing and acting and and just even just uh, a few of the the guys um, just their own take on what we had written. That is often what I I love about how these sketches turn out is yeah you know you're you're giving words to a comedian basically and, right and sometimes not even a comedian yeah and um, they they just take it and they run with it and they take it to a whole place you didn't think would happen and it's it was so, fantastic so crazy. Um, and I think in particular with a lot of the sketches, we don't have time to do a lot of rehearsal. Uh, often it's usually just a quick read through backstage before we go on once, if, if that. Usually we get to do once. But so, you know, that's, that's some of the most fun about these is we're, we're actually the performances. Is it? Yeah. I mean, um, so I think this is a perfect example of how that can, that just perfect kismet come together. And, exactly. Um, so anyway, here it is. Everyone's bananas. Enjoy. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming in today, everybody. This is very, very exciting for us. Yeah. Yeah. As you all know, we're doing a table read for uh, the sketch Everyone's Bananas uh, for our next Piffle episode all about fruit. We are so happy that all of you agreed to do the show. Uh, we probably don't need to make introductions here, but just to make it proper, uh, everyone uh, say hello to Sean Connery. Hello. Hey. hey, hey, hey. It's my pleasure. <laughs> And Liam Neeson is joining us. Uh, say hello to Liam. Hey, Liam. Hey, hey Liam. Hey, hey. Hi, I'm Liam Neeson. Uh, we've got Michael Caine here. Hello. Hey, 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 Michael. Hey. Hi there. <laughs> and uh, p- playing the part of the banana, Russell Crowe. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. I don't know how we managed to get you all on the show, but we're certainly happy you're here. Yeah, really. Uh, hey, let's just get started, shall we? Um, you should all have your scripts in front of you. We'll be starting on page three. Now, just to give you some background on what's going on here, uh, basically the sketch is set in a dystopic future where everyone is a fruit, and there is a tribe of bananas who are trying to take over the world and turn people into bananas. So uh, this scene takes place in a dark basement. Uh, Barry the Apple, uh, which is you, Sean Connery, has been strapped to a board and is being tortured by Billy the Banana, played uh, by Russell Crowe. Uh, the rest of you come in to save the day. And remember, this episode is all about fruit, so I really try to play that angle. Yeah, so, so whenever you're ready, take it away. Ah, you bloody bastard. <laughs> Shit me free straight away. Oh, I'm going to fly you sliding on the apples but like a banana. <laughs> you might take my skin, but you'll never take my freedom. <laughs> I'm going to make your juices fly. Okay, I'm just going to cut things. I'm going to cut right there. That was good uh, so far. I'm just wondering if maybe we can take that from the top again and try to enunciate the words a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> It's just a little mumble to me. And also, Sean Connery, uh, I think you gave a line, something like, uh, you'll never take my freedom, which is actually just from, from Braveheart. Um, if you could just stick to the text that's written, that would be great. Yeah, that would be... Anyway, let's just take it from the top again. Ah, uh, 
you bloody bastard. <laughs> Shit me free, straight away. Oh, I'm gonna fly you, it's like no lie, you know, but no, but no, no. You might take my skinge, but at least I still got my core. Oh. <laughs> I'ma make your juices flow. Okay, okay, cut, uh, cut. Good, good, it was good. Um, I'm still losing a lot of dialogue, though. Um, it's just, I, I'm not sure the audience is gonna understand what's going on, you know? You, you know what, maybe, why don't we just skip ahead to when Liam Neeson and Michael Caine come in to save Sean Connery. Uh, it's page eight for everyone. Uh, we'll take it from your line, Sean Connery. When I get out of here, I'm turning you into baby food. <laughs> and whenever you're ready. When ish kaba tia ema tuba ena skiba flu. When you jay tu du krensi bleki All right, now you skimmy tango, now me scoundrel. I'm Liam Neeson. <laughs> Heard you ski be competent as cool skips. I'm Liam Neeson. <laughs> and so check Mesa Pilk Minkin. Scooby Dooby Doo. Oh, come on, cut. You know what, uh, guys, just take five, all right? Uh, everyone just take five, get some water. Uh, I'm going to talk to Noah over here. I, I'm Liam Neeson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Are you understanding anything these guys are saying? Not a single word. I have no idea that their accents were so heavy in real life. Ex <laughs> except for Liam Neeson. Yeah, this is crazy. I don't understand how they get work. Let's just see if they can get this last part down, and then we can take it from there. All right. Okay, everyone, uh, bring it back in. Uh, you know, we're just going to skip ahead to the very last scene. That's page 12. So, Sean Connery, you are now free. And Michael Caine and Liam Neeson, you managed to overpower Russell Crowe, and you're now peeling his skin. We'll take it from the line, I'm going to turn your brains into banana bread. And remember, really try to clip your words so we can really hear what you're saying, you know? Whenever you're ready. I'm a turn your brangle <laughs> in a brangle. Michelle, Michelle. Turn ya. I'm Liam Neeson. Okay, you know, enough. You know what? I see, you're not even looking at the script anymore. You got, you're not even trying, those aren't even real words. You're just moaning. I'm Liam Neeson. Yeah, we know that! We know that! And I'm Sean Connery. What, what, no, that, what that wasn't even... Ah. All right, all right, you're, you're fired, Sean Connery. Get out. I'm fine, stick around. You too, Russell Crowe, you are also fired. Oh, come on. You can't speak real words, you can't be on piffle. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? You're all fired. Everyone go. We'll get someone else who can read. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Wow. I can't believe we just fired all those Hollywood stars. Wait. Shh. You hear that? S someone, someone's still there. I'm Liam Neeson. Get out of here, Liam Neeson. Get out. Oh, boy. Is that not one of the best Michael Caine accents? <laughs> so this when, is what we were talking about. When, when he goes, when he went, grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> It was perfect. It was a, he didn't do it. Did, did he do it in rehearsal? I can't actually remember I now. I can't remember, but, but I lost it. Yeah. I mean, you can hear me. I just couldn't even maintain. I was, I was corpsing, as they say. In the um, biz. In the business. But th um, this is, that's an example of Tim, you know, he's not, he's not a, an actor and he, he, I think he tore it up. No, and he had some of my favorite moments in that yeah. show. Actually, uh, at the very end of this year two in review, we're going to play a different segment from the same episode that also kind of pivots around something amazing that Tim does. Uh, so that, that was uh, Tim playing Michael Caine. There you go. Uh, Chester as uh, Russell Crowe. Russell Crow, thank you. Uh, Chris 
as Sean, Sean Connery, Connery naturally Scott Scotsman, and uh, John O'Reilly as Liam Liam Nishan. Nishan. Um, and Noah and I just playing ourselves, obviously, in that as one. we often do. The next sketch we've got coming up is from uh, episode episode. You I did it again. again. What, what is happened? that? Episode Ep- episode. Well, you know what? Because I'm about to say episode thirteen, so I'm like episode thirteen. That's not a good excuse. Yeah, what was your excuse for 12? <laughs> <sighs> I was thinking about episode 13. <laughs> uh, this is from episode 13, Space, um, uh, that, that featured Luke Burridge, uh, uh, Paul Hawkins, and Katie Gunn, a musical guest, Katie Gunn. Uh, the sketch is just called Rocket Man. I don't think we need to set it up anymore no. than that. Nope. <laughs> you, you know what's coming, guys. <laughs> Mission Control, this is Zeus 3. We are ready for takeoff. Over. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's find our places, secure helmets, and fasten safety belts. Let's bring this baby into orbit. Roger that, Captain. Safety belt is fashioned, ready to get out of here. All good on the navigation deck, ready to go. Um... Erickson, please confirm. Yeah, just wanted to clarify something you said earlier. (laughs) You said fasten safety belts? Yes, we are preparing for takeoff. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, no worries, got it. Hey, Perry! What's a safety belt? What? What's a safety belt? Are you kidding me? It's a seat belt. Right there. Oh, okay, okay, got it. <laughs> Just making sure you knew it was a test you passed. Good job. All right, Zeus 3, all systems are go. We are ready for ignition. Erickson, prepare for ignition. Uh... Mission control. Mission Control, Zeus Free is ready for liftoff. Start countdown on your go. Uh, Just a quick question about countdown before we leave. Are we going on one or zero? I feel like it's like one of those moments where you're playing rock, paper, scissors. Oh, Oh my God. It's okay, Erickson. Mission Control will actually say liftoff. Okay, okay. okay. Are we starting from 10? (laughs) Initiating countdown in 10. Okay, we're starting from 10. (laughs) And we're counting down. That makes sense. All right, okay. Seven. This takes a Six, long time, doesn't it? Five. Longer than four, I thought. It feels like three, 10 seconds. So. Two, one, lift off. We have lift off. Mission Control, this is Zeus 3. We have successfully reached orbit. All right, folks, let's get to work. Roger that, Captain. Engines are stood. Everything's looking good. Vital signs are green. We're good here, too. Hi, guys. Uh... I don't want to be an alarmist here or anything, but I just unfastened my so-called safety belts, and uh, I am now floating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually floating. Is anyone else getting this? Er, uh, Erickson, we're in zero gravity right now. There's no gravity. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Perry, we're in space. Yes, of course we're in space. Where have you been? Yeah, no, I know that. I know that. That's why we did the countdown thing, and... That's why we did all the swimming in the big pool at NASA. <laughs> Erickson, I'm going to have to ask you to find your seat again. We haven't stabilized yet, and things are going to get a little bumpy. Oh, my God. Is that Earth? Uh, Captain, I think he might have altitude sickness. So it is round. Who knew? <laughs> uh, yeah, Captain, definitely altitude sickness. Wait a second. I'm a rocket man. Are we going to Mars? N- no, we're meeting up with the International Space Station. Mars ain't the kind of place to raise a kid. Erickson, please stay away from the emergency hatch. In fact, it's cold as hell. And there's no one there to raise Captain, him. Captain, he Captain, he's opening the hatch. I'm a rocket man. Burning out his fuse up here alone. No, no, no. Oh! No, no, no. Oh! I caught the hatch. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh. 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 That was horrible. Oh. Oh. Well, that was that, that that was probably a good thing, right? Hey, Elton John, suck my balls, and I think it's gonna be a long, long time to touch down, break me out, I'll get to fine. I think I am the better day. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, I'm a rocket man. Should have kept that going a little longer just to hear Noah sing some more. (laughs) The funny thing is the lyrics are right in front of me and I still mess them up.
I, I, I do really wish that we had let you uh, continue singing the song a yeah, little bit more. You know what? I, I This is also like a symptom of of doing it live and just, yeah. you know, because you got one take and I fucked that song up. I never fuck the songs up. Yeah, but you I, had, I, yeah, I, I messed the lyrics up. You had the lyrics up yeah, in front of you. But yeah. um, that featured Luke Burridge, Paul Hawkins, and Katie Gunn uh, and myself playing uh, all the straight characters, straight astronauts, <laughs> and Noah playing the crazy astronaut. Um from uh, episode 13, Space, but... On to America, Josh? On to our America episode, <laughs> which I think all around was one of the tightest episodes that we've yeah, had. Yeah, we, uh, we had the pleasure of having uh, Zach Anner on the show. Yeah, that was a very um, great pleasure. He's so funny, funny man. And, and Dan Stern, who's now helping us write uh, many of these sketches. Has been for, for yeah, much of these sketches. But um, one, one of his sketches will be up uh, later in this episode. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, um, the America episode, um, obviously we had to have uh, an, a sketch called The Greatest Country in the World. Right. Um, and we had to have guests that were all American. There you go. And, uh, and that's what we did. So uh, Dan Stern, like we said, Zach Anner, and musical guest Blake Worrell. Um, who's also American. And us, we're American too. So there there you have it. And uh, as Noah said, this, this sketch is called The Greatest Country. In the, and, and this, I think I said before that may have been one of the weirdest sketches we've done. This is by far the weirdest. The weirdest sketch we've ever done. Yeah. Um, you can thank Noah again for that. <laughs> Although, I, I need to switch things up, you know. No, it's fine. The sound effects were fun to put together for this too. Uh, so... Without further ado, here's the greatest country in the world. Howdy, John. Glad to see you could make it. Happy 4th of July to you and the family. And make yourself comfortable. Thanks, Chad. It's very nice of you to invite us. This is my wife, Maria, and my son, Peter. Hello. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Oh. <laughs> Look at you, little guy. Good to see you're fine. I'm fine, too. Everyone, say hello to my wife, Jenny. Jenny, where are you? What's it look like? I'm over here by the cooler, Chad. Well, what you doing over there, damn it? I'm getting a beer, Chad. Well, God dang it, I'm introducing you to our new neighbors. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? How y'all doing? Everyone, this is my wife, Jenny. Ain't she the best? Y'all want a beer? Uh, no, no shanks. Thank you. No, maybe later. Okay, sit yourselves. How about a burger or a dog? I got them on the grill now. Burger or dog? I don't eat dogs. No, a hot dog. Of course you eat hot dogs. Come on, these hot dogs are the best. They're made right here in America. Best country in the world. Hey, man, Chad. Goddamn right. Hey, where are you now, Jenny? I'm over here by the shed drinking my beer, polishing my rifle. Hey, maybe later we can all take turns shooting it. Uh, I don't know about that. It seems dangerous. I, I don't think this is a good idea. Oh, but Poppy, I would love to shoot this gun. Now, Peter... <laughs> Listen to your father. Now, if you don't like guns, that's fine with us. Just as long as you respect the Second Amendment. This is the best country in the world. Hey, man, don't tread on me. That's goddamn right. Hey, where are you now, Over Jenny? Over here, Chad. I'm in my floaty chair, drinking my beer, polishing my rifle in the pool. Oh, oh no, no. It's fine. Everything is fine. Excellent. Oh, looky, dogs are ready. Here, grab this bun and some ketchup and mustard, and then we can all pray upon this Bible and thank Jesus Christ for this bountiful feast we are about to have. Oh, I'd rather not. I'm, I'm afraid we are not as religious as you are. Papi, I would love to touch these people. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, our constitution says there's freedom of religion here too, and that's fine and dandy as long as you let Jesus Christ into your heart. Hey man, don't chat on us, motherfucker. Where are you, Jenny? Ah, oh, I'm here in the garage getting my hands greasy in this truck engine in my floaty chair whilst drinking my beer and polishing my rifle in the pool. <laughs> All righty, who's up for some wrestling? Wrestling? What does that even mean? I would love to wrestle in the mud. <laughs> you may get hurt. Y'all don't know what wrestling is? It's a great American pastime. Hey, man, don't you dare tell on me. Best country in the world. Dang it, where are you now? I'm J up here, Chad, hoisting up this here flag on this here flagpole with some greasy hands in my floaty chair and drinking my beer and polishing my rifle in the pool. <laughs> now, who's up for some strip poker? This is the best country in the world. We know. Yeah, yeah, that's why we moved here. Look, Chad, I'm riding a bald eagle. Puppy. <laughs> I would like to ride the eagle. <laughs> Not now, Peter. You hear that? That's the sound of rainbows in war. I'm surfing on a rainbow. Fuck yeah! Yeehaw! 
This truly is the best country in the world! All right, you see that, John? Your son gets it. Yes, I would love to have a beer now, please. Oh, boy. Yes, yeah, sorry, hon. The law states you cannot have any alcoholic beverages until you are 21 years old. Here's some Kool-Aid. Best country in the world! <laughs> that was... Uh... <laughs> that was bizarre. Yeah, that was <laughs> the weirdest we've ever gotten on this show. Uh, that was Dan as John, Blake as Maria, Zach as Peter, Noah as Ginny, and myself as Chad. Yeah, there you have that. We don't. Well, I, we just we kept ourselves introducing or, or crediting everyone, so we don't need to do it yeah, but, again ourselves. But <laughs> um, what do we got next? We've got the, uh, from, the oh from our uh, episode. Uh, uh, which one? Episode fourteen. 14. Episode fourteen. Art. Art. Just art. Um, that featured uh, once again Garrett Kummer, returning guest, uh, Max Schreier, ga- gallerist. He's a gallerist and also works for Artsy. Right, curator. Yeah. All um, sorts of art-related exactly. stuff. Uh, and uh, musical guests, uh, James and Black, who are still on tour all over Europe. So it's insane. Can... I've, been, I've been following them uh, on the social medias, and yeah. they've, they, they're they like in a different place like pretty much If you have a chance days. to check those guys out, I would really yeah. recommend it. Um, they, and... should, they should be back in Berlin soon. I, I, th- I believe they're coming back for the winter. Nice. Yes. Um, so they were all featured in uh, this sketch, which actually it had its genesis in uh, one of our fake sponsor spots that we did in season one. I believe it was episode six. Uh, where we we did a, a fake sponsor, the Berlin Artist Foundation, and then I kind of took that idea, that that kernel of the idea, and made like a fake commercial, full commercial out of it for the Berlin Art School, which we did live, which you're about to hear. Darn! I just can't seem to get the perspective on this painting right. <laughs> we know how you feel, Francis. Painting is hard. Whoa! Who are you? I'm the Berlin Art School. The Berlin what? The Berlin Art School. Come on, I'll show you. The Berlin Art School, you can learn art at the Berlin Art School. Any kind of art at the Berlin Art School. Drawing and painting and sculpture and mixed media and video and performance art and even music at the Berlin Art School. I wrote this jingle at the Berlin Art School on Garage Band at the Berlin Art School. Wow, everyone's learning art. <laughs> That's right, come on over here. Hi, Matthias. Hi. What are you doing? I'm gluing these pigeon feathers to a cock ring. <laughs> you mean you're making art? That's right. It's part of a performance art piece that I'm performing inside an abandoned children's hospital in Neukölln. <laughs> I just received the grant of 20,000 euros. <laughs> wow, what did you do before you came here? I lived with my parents in Hennef, a small town outside of Bonn. Anybody can be an artist. Absolutely, and we'll show you how. The Berlin Art School, making art at the Berlin Art School. Are you looking for a new direction in your life? Are you bored at work? Unemployed? 22 years old? Do you have a degree in English or philosophy? All of these things qualify you for immediate acceptance to the Berlin Art School. Before I went to the Berlin Art School, I was a full-time accountant making $65,000 a year. Now, I'm an artist getting unemployment checks from the German government. Thanks, Berlin Art School. After school, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, so my parents bought me a plane ticket to Berlin, and I discovered that Berlin Art School. Now I party all weekend, go to the Turkish market every Tuesday and Friday, go to cheap groceries, and I live in an apartment with 10 other people. Thanks, Berlin Art School. (laughs) Berlin Art School, doing art at the Berlin Art School. Hey, Francis. Hi. I see you've met our painting instructor, Meryl. Yeah, she's teaching me to see beyond the paint. Without paint, I don't need to worry about drawing perspective. It's totally changed my perspective. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. A blank canvas allows your public to visualize their own art. It is the purest form of artistic democracy. We only have the best instructors here at the Berlin Art School. The Berlin Art School. 
at the Berlin Art School. At the Berlin Art School, we don't just teach you how to make art, we teach you how to be an artist. Did you know that 80% of making art is writing the description of your piece? That's why we have a staff of five writing instructors with PhDs in writing to help you explain your art. Describe your piece. Uh, it's a blank canvas. One of the corners is a little dirty from being in my backpack. No, 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 no. It is a moment in time representing the period of life in which we reflect upon the failures of our parents <laughs> to live up to their own political ideals. Just as our parents did before us, we pick up the torch of useful idealism and carry it onwards to the next generation. The dirty corner reminds us that even in the naivete of this idealism, we inherit the flaws of our elders. Wow, that's great! <laughs> The Berlin Art School is dedicated to making you an artist, even if you shouldn't be. You can find the Berlin Art School everywhere in Berlin. For a full prospectus or more information, catch the next cheap flight to Berlin and crash on your friend's couch. The Berlin Art School. <laughs> uh, right, so... Uh, that was uh, that was of course as Gay Gayer Kummer, Max Schreier, uh, Bella Black, and Bruce James, and Noah and myself uh, playing all the various Berlin Art School. Berlin Art School. That yeah. was uh, we recorded the jingle yes. ahead of time. Yes, uh, clearly needed to do that. But that was <laughs> fun. That was uh, yeah, you know, that was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> I like these these these. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see some of them later, but you know, kind of fake ads. Um, are right. a lot of fun to do. Kind of, um, yeah, is a, a different take on a sketch. You know? Speaking of fake ads, hello. Um, this is one of the fake sponsorship, pre-recorded fake sponsorship spots that Noah and I did this past season, which was also actually for uh, episode fourteen art, um, and <laughs> it's for uh, Natty's Naturals, Natty's Naturals, which uh, quite a few people were almost fooled. Yeah, the, I I talked to at least one person who was full on yeah, fooled. Bleeding. I mean, skeptical, but didn't uh, didn't pick up on because it's subtle. Yeah, exactly. You know, we should just let people hear this. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, a lot of you you'll you know. see what we're talking about. Yeah, folks, this episode of Piffle is brought to you by our friends at Natty's Naturals. Natty's Naturals, your source for all natural and vegan paints. We know a lot of artists in this city, and we know how difficult it can be to find high-quality, natural, chemical-free supplies. Natty's Naturals is the only source for 100% all-natural, GMO-free, ethical, and hypoallergenic paints. Whether you're looking for watercolors, oil-based paint, inks, even crayons, Noah, Natty's Naturals has you covered. Are you, are you looking to create your next big mural? Come on, this is Berlin. You're doing street art. I know you. Or maybe you're just looking to do some small sketches. Natty's Naturals offers everything from bulk paint specials to fine art pencils made from sustainable wood. And all of their papers and canvas come from recycled sources, so you can be sure your projects are helping to keep the planet healthy. This is important, everybody. We know you guys out there. Natalie and her team of art crusaders, because that's what they are, Josh, art crusaders have spent years lovingly crafting their custom-made paints. Do you know where your acrylic paint comes from, Josh? I No, I don't even have acrylic paint, well, but can, we know you guys out there I do. can tell you, Josh, it's probably made from some, some pretty nasty stuff. Only with Natty's Naturals can you see exactly what's in every paint. It's right there on the label. Josh, What's in the bright, vibrant, golden sunrise yellow? Sesame seeds. What about eucalyptus green? Made from kale. Deep chocolate? Irish cork bark. Amber rose red? Upcycled menstrual blood. Galactic blue? Organic blueberry skin. Folks, if you're serious about your art, get serious about your art supplies. Visit nattiesnaturals.com and enter the coupon code PIFFLE at checkout. That's PIFFLE without our usual exclamation point, PIFFLE, for 10% off your first order. This is a deal you don't want to miss. Natty's Naturals, your source for all natural and vegan paints. Um, did we get you? Yeah. Did you? Did, you know, we had to actually change the name of this. Because? Because the first, what was the first thing that we... Mm -mm. 
what did we call them? Natalie's Naturals? I think it, it was Natalie's Nat something like the yeah, I think it was Natalie's Naturals was yeah. our first choice for that. And of course, you know, we did a little bit of research before we put that into an episode. And it turns out Natalie's Naturals exists. And it's not, it's not, clearly it's not art, but it was something like cosmetics. It was like something similar, like right. totally vegan and weirdo yep. hippie cosmetics, um, <laughs> which just. <laughs> weirdo and hippie. Look, you know, we, we grew up with that shit. Yeah, we're allowed to, we're allowed to poke fun. When there's it. more places selling <laughs> patchouli than there are groceries in your hometown, you know that there's something wrong. Yeah. You, Hopefully we haven't ha- offended anybody back home in Woodstock, but nobody's listening. listening. <laughs> um, speaking of back home in Woodstock, man, do you see these way we're tying Whoa, things back? This is completely planned. Dominoes. No. Um, episode uh, uh, 11 was all about family and featured our family, bro- our, our brother. It featured other brother. There's a brother in between us. His name is uh, we call him Ben. His other people call him Jonas. Yeah, other people call him Jonas. Together we we'll call him Jonas Ben. Other people call him Benjamin. Uh, we call him Ben. Our brother Ben Telson, who is a do- fucking doctor, just to make us feel bad about our lives. Uh, <laughs> he is a doctor back in America. He uh, he came, flew all the way over uh, to, for a family reunion, and we thought, you know what? While you're here for a family reunion, let's do an episode about family. We had him on the show. And then we did, obviously, the compulsory family history with Josh and Noah. Right, and which ben. is, we haven't actually done, I don't know if we've done it since then. I don't think we have. It's just, it was, it's getting too hard to write. We've written everything there is to write about right. our family. So, Anyways. <laughs> in uh, Other guests in, uh, just so you know, other guests in, in episode 11 family, uh, including our brother Ben, uh, Drew Portnoy, a fantastic comedian who's now no longer in Berlin. Uh, and one of our favorite musical guests, Volk. There Volk. you go. Volk, Volk. Volk. Whatever you want to say. A it's V-O-L-K. Voltage. So if you're German, it's Volk. Um, and they are, uh, they're about to uh, embark on their first tour. And they've got a GoFundMe if you want to support them. Go fund them. Go f- f- and have fun with the... Uh, Don't try. No, the pun was gone. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Family History with Josh and Noah and Ben. It is now time for a segment we haven't done in a while, and it's only appropriate that we do it for this show all about family. That's right. It's time for Family History with Josh and Noah. And Ben. In, in 1995, our parents sent all three of us off to Germany to spend the summer with our German grandfather. Our grandfather took us on a grand tour of Europe, visiting all of the major cities. The following are postcards we wrote home to our parents. June 23rd, 1995, Cologne, Germany. Hi, Mom and Dad. We're at the train station about to go to Paris. Almost missed our train, but Grandpa ran a bunch of red lights, so we made it okay. (laughs) Au revoir. June 23rd, 1995, Cologne, Germany. Hi, Mom and Dad. Yesterday, before we went to bed, Grandpa showed us his war memorial. Yeah. <laughs> June 23rd, 1995, Cologne, Germany. Mommy, was Grandpa a Nazi? <laughs> June 25th, 1995, Paris, France. Mom and Dad, I'm writing from Paris. Grandpa forgot to book a hotel, but it's okay because he knows someone from back in the day. <laughs> I think our room is an old bunker. It smells like cigarettes and cheese. June 25th, 1995, Paris, France. Hi, Mom and Dad. We went to Moulin Rouge today. I can't sleep. (laughs) June 25th, 1995, Paris, France. Mommy and Daddy, Grandpa says kids can drunk wine here. Ah! Ah, I'm sorry, so sorry. How are you? June 28th, 1995, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Hi, Mom and Dad. Amsterdam is weird. We went to a coffee shop today, but they didn't really have coffee, and it smelled like Dad's workshop. June 28th, 1995, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I'm writing from Fumke's room. She's a friend of Grandpa's, and I think they're wrestling in the bed, but I can't tell. 
she, she only has this red light on. <laughs> June 28th, 1995, Amsterdam, <clears throat> the Netherlands. Dearest mother and father, I went to the Van Gogh Museum today. It was really lovely and inspiring. Did you know his name is actually pronounced Van Gogh? <laughs> July 2nd, 1995, London, England. Hi, Mom and Dad. We arrived in London yesterday. Grandpa said London looks a lot different from the ground. Oh. <laughs> July 2nd, 1995, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Dear Mom and Dad, I'm still in Fumke's room. I think Grandpa forgot about me. <laughs> Fumke has a lot of other friends. Can you send me food? <laughs> June 2nd, 1995, London, England. Hi, Mommy and Daddy. Grandpa keeps talking about how much better the German Panthers are, but we didn't even go to the zoo today. <laughs> July 6th, 1995, Munich, Germany. Mom and Dad, we got to Munich today and Grandpa just started crying. It's, <laughs> it's been a fun trip, but I'm glad it's almost over. I have to go, Grandpa wants another beer. July 6th, 1995, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. <laughs> Liebe Mama und Papa, ich bin, noch, <laughs> ich bin noch stets in Amsterdam. Famke sagt, dass die Mord bezeugen irgendwas kommen. <laughs> July 6th, 1995, Munich, Germany. Mommy and Daddy, I asked Grandpa for some juice yesterday and he stopped talking to me. <laughs> See you soon. I guess we should, um, we, we do need to clarify. A little disclaimer? Yeah, disclaimer that none of, we, we put the, in the actual episode, uh, in episode 11, later on in the show, we have a disclaimer that we didn't have that that, that no. grandfather was never in the picture for us so I, we never even met him never met him uh certainly uh he's he, that was not <laughs> him in any way that was entirely 100 percent made up um actually the only part of it that was like based on some truth was the running of red lights yeah our grandmother trying to get us to the train station on time at seven in the morning in Cologne, Germany, ran every single red light. <laughs> Which it turned out later in life was something that she was not a stranger no, to. No, they had to take her license away <laughs> because she'd gotten in way too many car accidents. Um, but uh, we, uh, we... We digress. Never, yeah, we digress. <laughs> uh, she, was, she was an amazing woman. Uh, we miss her a lot. But um, that was that was certainly an adventure. Um, so, what do we have next, Noah? Um, this is from a, a more recent episode. Um, our last one, actually. actually yeah. Well, okay, our most recent episode, uh, episode twenty, the media featuring Andrew Reed, our dearly departed Andrew Reed. <laughs> <laughs> He's not dead. He just moved to New York. Everybody, <laughs> I'm so sad. Um, and Peter Oliver from from uh, RT. RT, and musical guest Teresa Bergman. Um, and, and this episode, uh, we, we did a sketch about newsies. Old, like a, a old newspaper old, guys. Yeah, newsies. You know, little, the little boys who run around. But, but uh. But he's not, the, the main character's I, not a newsie. My, my character. That was a newsie. But, uh, th this is actually a sketch that's written by Dan Stern. Yeah. Um, who. who credit where credit's due. Credit where credit's due. This is a f one of my favorite sketches, I think, <laughs> just in the craft of how it was written and sort of the the preparation we had to do and the speed at yeah. which we had to deliver. We talked about it a little bit recently in a, in a, a short, but right. this was, yeah, this is the sketch I prepared the most for. I had some specific notes from Dan about this one and it turned out so well. Yes. It's uh, so much fun. So Josh, then uh, with, with notes in mind, uh, what is the name of this sketch? The Newspaper Man. There you go. <laughs> the, news <laughs> the Newspaper Man. <laughs> Enjoy. Walter, thank you for coming in to interview here at Upworthy. You've gotten some great recommendations, but we want to get to know you a little and see if you'd be a good fit with us at Upworthy. Sure. Call me Wally the Wiz Waldron. I'm the best damn newspaper man that's ever put pen to paper. I push more ribbon through a mechanical typer than Fords push cars down the assembly line. Uh, 
So your background is more in print media? Well, I'm certainly not a fan of the talkies. Uh, the, the talkies? A lot of cheap thrills and fish gills. Real man eats mahogany bars, not movie stars. Know what I mean? Sort of? I'm also a crack radio man, but I gotta say, I only did that to put a few more gun drops in the candy jar. For the greenbacks, the hot scratch. Here, take a look at this resume. My dame typed it up for you. Uh, sure. Uh, let me get out my glasses. Son, eyeglasses are for cheats and liars. Be a real man and squint. Did you say real man? Sure did, sweetheart. Don't call me that. Well, ain't you spicier than a Cincinnati cinnamon? Say, uh, what kind of newsroom is this anyway? Uh, well, we're a website that specializes in clickbait and listicles. Hmm. Son, that's crazier than a chocolate Zagnut bar. What? He means you're more nuts than a baby Ruth. Who are you? That's my, that's my personal newsy boy, Tommy Tweety Kid Telecky. <laughs> At your service. Tommy's got a bit of a wheeze in his voice, but the doctors say the cigarettes should cure his asthma. Anyone got a light? This is a smoke-free office. (laughs) 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 Our... <clears throat> are, 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 you, are you okay? Oh, he's a bit of a stick baller and a diceman, but he's trusty as a new Ford. Is that good? I'll tell you what else. Tommy's got a girl at home who's a real potted plant, if you know what I mean. We really don't. She's a one-of-a-kind fourth-floor Francine, if you get my drift. Not getting it. Now, there ain't enough hooch in the who's your state for old Wally to smooch with that, Kate. Are you... Are you trying to say that Tommy's wife is ugly? What I'm trying to say is that ugly would be a compliment. (laughs) Ain't that the truth? She is not a looker. (laughs) You look concerned, but don't worry about Wally the Whale Waldron. I always eat standing up. Ain't that the truth? I'm not the kind of guy that'll sell you on a good hat beating two umbrellas. I don't even know to begin where to figure out that that means. Could you maybe just tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure, sure. You can count on me to put the mustard on the clock. What? This is Wally the Wonder Waldron here. He got the exclusive interview with Catherine O'Leary's cow just before Chicago burned. Sure did. Wally was at the Pocasset Manufacturing Company on Pocasset Street reporting from the Great Fall River Fire. That was front page. And he was the only reporter on the corner of Auburn and West Helm at the very moment when the fire began that engulfed half of the Hollywood of the South, also known as Mothersville, a.k.a. the Peach City. I'm talking about Atlanta. It sounds like he's been there at the moment a lot of fires began. (laughs) This is Wally the Wire Waldron, and he's a real hot ticket. So, uh, what was one of your big non-fire-related stories? Maybe something with celebrities? Well, I broke the case of the murdered Tanglewood heiress. I have never heard of the Tanglewoods. You never heard of Meriwether Tanglewood? Why, he's got more applesauce than Samuel or Mott. (laughs) 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 Okay, now how would you report that in less than 140 characters? 140 characters? Well, I think I could find you 12 dozen odd fellows just down on the docks. No, no. No, no, 140 letters. Letters? Why, that's not more than a headline. Well, let's hear it. All right, uh, heiress is a mess, choked to death on her own jewels, who will confess? That is not bad. Ain't, ain't that the truth? And how would you hashtag it? Hashtag? What are you, hippies? A word or two that sums up the point, or better yet, ironically comments on it. Hmm. Hashtag killing it. Nice. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag diamonds are forever. That's actually pretty good. You sure you haven't worked in social media before? Not unless you count a five martini lunch with the news pool. Ain't that the truth? (laughs) 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 All right, Wally, you've got the job. Fantastic. That's ace. I'd shake your hands, but I don't trust women and never touch Jews. Extra, (laughs) extra. Read all about it. One simple trick and you won't believe what happens next. (laughs) Uh. 
I I couldn't tell. I mean, like people were. I loved the sketch, and there was there, there was a slight hesitation right at the end. Like, all the Americans, all the expats in the audience. Yeah, they got they, they got, got the it, joke. and they were laughing. But yeah. there were definitely a few German faces that just went like blank, grimacing. Yeah, um, which happens to me pretty much every time I do <laughs> stand up in in Germany and do some Jewish jokes. Um, <gasps> Uh, I did. I know. I man. I did it again. Go ahead. Weave this one in. Yeah. Well, talking about Berlin. Yeah. Talking about being in the city, and funny stuff happening in the city. Uh, <laughs> talking about Berlin police tweets. <laughs> Berlin police department tweets. We should have done it again. We should have. They because they started tweeting again in English um, recently. Uh, just about um, pickpocketing. <laughs> oh my god. Uh-uh. Um. If people don't know this, uh, the Berlin Police Department has um, has these like I guess like twenty four hour campaigns where they start tweeting in English about a certain sort of well they do crime. it they do it in both languages yes but the, this one especially is right. in English for right. for the international audience as well right. um, and uh, for for this um, this this upcoming sketch it's not really a sketch it's it's a segment it's, it's a, segment. a segment let's right. call it a segment um, we read verbatim the the tweets from the Berlin <laughs> Police Department. Uh, this is from episode 19, again, uh, America. That's uh, once again with Dan Stern, Zach Anner, and Blake Worrell. Uh, enjoy this one. It's, it's wonderful. Now, while this episode is about America, we are, of course, in Berlin, Germany. And recently, if you didn't know, the Berlin Police Department began live tweeting all police response calls for, for 24 hours on Twitter. Naturally, since Berlin is home to so many expats, they also created a parallel English language feed. It is fucking amazing. (laughs) So to commemorate this unintentionally brilliant internet goldmine, Piffle will now present a reading of select tweets from the Berlin Police Department. Lonely, an abandoned dog chews on a bone in Pankow. We will take care of him. Hashtag 24 hour police. Wow. Caller finds a flower pot inside his car. It entered through the windshield. <laughs> Hashtag 24 hour police. The ex boyfriend is ringing the doorbell nonstop. We will calm him down. 24 hour police. Children start a car in Lichtenberg and remain seated. <laughs> Worried stroller calls the police. Hashtag 24H police. The suspected fire in Lichtenberg was only a burnt toast. (laughs) (laughs) A man was beaten by his ex-girlfriend in Spandau. No help wanted. 24 hour police. (laughs) Quarrel between eight well-oiled male in Charlottenburg. We will try to intermediate. Hashtag 24 hour police. Spontaneous dog fancier demonstration at Schlachtensee for peaceful cooperation of dogs and humans. <laughs> Renter reports rioting, inebriated bro in his flat who doesn't want to leave his bathroom. <laughs> Hashtag 24 hour police. Topless woman, Mon. <laughs> Topless woman, maundering in Plenterwald. She left before we were able to inspect her. (laughs) Hashtag 24-hour police. And that was a reading of Berlin Police Department tweets. There it is. 24 hours. Police. Police. 24-H police. Hashtag 24-H police. So, yeah, just to give you background... Well, you heard the background, but um, the, yeah, the, the, for 24 hours, they just tweeted all of the crimes. Every that were, single response call. Every a, call amazing. they responded to. Amazing. And, and recently, we, we alluded to this before, um, they were tweeting every response call about pickpocketing. Um, 
So if you guys are on Twitter, go just follow what is it? Uh, uh, it's oh, like Berlin International po- yeah, poli- police. Uh, you can ch- ch- check out our Twitter feed. We've retweeted a bunch of their stuff. You can it's, find it. It's just nah, just uh, just the the purest form of comedy yeah. um, because it's unintentional yeah. and it's so funny. The mistranslations. Oh and the, man, just everything. I wonder if they've caught on. There's got to be someone over there who realizes like, man, there are a lot of like. Why are these getting retweeted so much <laughs> by all these like <laughs> local comedians? <laughs> so we're we're coming up on our last segment for this year two in review, which is a, a slight departure from what we've been doing in this entire clip show, right? Which is we we've basically been showing the sketches, um, but we thought we needed to have at least one piffle round because it is piffle after all. It is a piffle show, um, and this I I have to say hands down is probably my favorite round of Piffle. I, I'm, I might just say of the show, yeah. not just of this past year, but, but of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. because every tiny little part of it has this just beautiful little gem and it ends with this amazing moment. Uh, once again, thanks to Tim from the Great Danes, from Great Danes, not the, from Great Danes. Um, this, is, uh, this is from uh, uh, episode 15 film. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, uh, just to refresh you guys, that's that it features uh, comedian Chris Davis, uh, John O'Reilly from Crazy Bastard Sauce, and uh, musical guests um, uh, Travis and Tim from Great Danes. And here it is. Enjoy it. Um, another raw, beautiful moment. We're going to play another round of Piffle. Do you know who I am? Um, hello. Do you know who I am? <laughs> It's like every show, it's a little less laughter at that one. (laughs) In this round, our panelists will be given the name of an obscure person, and they will have to tell us what is so special about this person that we're talking about them today. As a final reminder, the theme for this month's show is film. Film. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Dead people. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> got a huge fan right up front right in front of the microphone it's awesome <laughs> panelists are you ready to hear the name of this person why well, yes I am Josh. Yeah. Yes, All right. absolutely. the name is Asha Bosley Asha Bosley and whenever you're done writing pass your answers over to me alright great Danes <laughs> You ready to hear uh, different biographies for Asha Bosley? Yeah, I'm really yep. excited. All right, here we go. Asha Bosley, the most credited person in film history. She has appeared in over 3,000 Bollywood <laughs> films. She's also the inspiration for the corner shop song, Brimful of Asha. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that one was really believable up to a point. <laughs> well, uh, okay, Asha Bosley. Asher Bosley started off in the Bollywood industry. His parents were huge stars in the <laughs> 80s, and he was always rumored and expected to make it big. The pressure became too much, so he fled to Afghanistan, where he trained with the Taliban in an act of rebellion. Oh, my God. <laughs> his, that is some serious rebellion. His, his reputation as a film guru caught up with him, and he became the official executioner in Taliban snuff films. <laughs> Gaining a Taliban Oscar for his efforts. <laughs> <laughs> he now works as a director for all ISIS execution films. Oh. <laughs> Mainly focusing on post-production color grading. <laughs> really, uh, really brings a new meaning to cut. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. My, uh. Wow. Uh, boy. All right. That's not even good. All right. <laughs> Asha Bosley, a Hollywood prosthetic makeup artist whose opinion that no fake severed head can look truly believable on camera led him to stipulate in his will that his head should be cut off after his death and used as a prop in a film. Shortly after his death in 2003, Rob Zombie agreed to use it in House of 1000 Corpses. Wow. I hope that's true. <laughs> well, I definitely God. don't hope it's number two. <laughs> yeah. And I know what we're watching tonight. <laughs> All right. Asha Bosley, the first woman ever filmed. <laughs> <laughs> my, 
Most people know that the Lumiere brothers' arrival of a train at La Chuj... Oh, boy. Chata. At La Chata. Arrival of a train at La Chata is the first film ever recorded, but amongst the men at the platform waiting for the train, there is one woman, and that woman is Asha Bosley. All right. So, those were four different biographies for Asha Bosley, who may be a woman or a man, according to these. We don't know yet. What do you think is the real biography? Number, who is the real? I think number four. Number four. The, number four, the first woman ever first filmed. Woman, yeah, woman yeah, filmed. I think that's... That's probably the most. That's Noah's answer. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Noah. Yes. What made you think of this? Well, it's actually quite interesting. It's never a good introduction for one of his stories. We all know that a train arriving at La Giota is the first film. Does everybody know that? The, the first film was a Lumiere Brothers film of a train arriving at a train station. Yeah, and there's a group people, of people yeah. there, and there's one woman. And oh. she obviously has to be the first woman filmed, right? Sure. What's her name? Not Asha Bosley. It's not. <laughs> it's not. But in my world, I'd like it to be Asha Bosley. <laughs> All right. Well, in uh, John O'Reilly's world, it was a Hollywood prosthetic makeup artist. Yeah. So ah. close to getting that. Another one where uh, that's the answer I, I would have chosen. That was kind of believable, eh? Yeah. yeah. I, th I think it's because... Um, I saw a photo recently of a friend of mine who was an extra on uh, Vikings. You know the TV series? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I think he didn't actually end up in the final cut of it, but there was a photo of him holding up a prosthetic head. And in the photo, I was like, that looks so real. Somebody worked on that for so long, you know? And then maybe I thought, well, this could have just got a head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What, what if it was a real head and no well, one totally knew? Illegal, yeah. Probably. Uh, Chris. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. I don't know. I don't know. Chris, I think Chris I've been reading too much news yeah. lately. <laughs> he was stressing about this answer so much, and then this is what he came up with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not cool to talk about ISIS and uh, no, it's in not. general. But why you know, you, I just thought I'd put it out it? there, get a feel for it. You guys liked it, so shame on you. <laughs> is that how you pronounce that, I ISIS? That's how sure. I pronounce yeah. it. Oh, I, I, I kept saying it's is is. is. It was I'm Isis saying. or Isis, and now it's I S. You've been going around calling them is is. Is is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has any idea what I'm talking about. No. Although, oh, you these know guys, what is is, are freaking yeah. me out, man. Yeah. I'm scared. Like, is is. Is is. You know what? If well, we... are they is or is they isn't? Is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think actually, if we could just start calling them is is on the news, like all of their power would be yeah. taken away. People would be like, Wait, is 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 here? Oh, you know. What, what I've never really understood. I think it stands for Islamic State. What are the other two? I, the other I and the other S. Islamic State, Islamic State. Of Iraq and Syria. Oh, okay. But no, some people no, call it ISIL, That's and I was calling it is ill. Is that? Because then, then it's it's. <laughs> let's keep what talking about. No, IS. let's not do it. The, an the correct answer is she's the most credited person in film history. She has over 3,000 uh, credits on, on Bollywood films. Uh, and she is indeed the inspiration for the corner shop song, wow. Brimful of Asha. Wow. Yeah, that's it. She's also, uh, she's got a Guinness World Record for being the most recorded artist of all time because she's actually not in any of the films. She's just a playback artist for bl Bollywood films. So she does the singing for the actors who are lip syncing along to her. And she's recorded over 12,000 songs. Wow. That's insane. That's in more than my iPod holds songs. <laughs> yeah, I still have an iPod. <laughs> I've got one other thing. Hey, Tim. Yes. Can you play Brimful of Asha? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Give him a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Oscar Broughton on the uh, on yeah the, uh, on the vocal on the south vocal. front. And Tim once again on guitar. Holy shit! Uh, that is a great place to end that round. <laughs> No, no better way to end a clip oh, show man. on that. Then. Oh, yeah. what a great segment. That was, I mean, every single beat of, I mean, every answer was really great, which is, I mean, let's be honest, it's rare. Um, <laughs> and then and then the response to every answer, the the whole ISIS is is thing. I still I still laugh about that sometimes. I, st- I still giggle to myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, I try is, not to. It's my joke. Is ill. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, uh, Tim, uh, Tim Hook from, Great Danes. For those of you, maybe you missed this episode. I would encourage you to go listen to the whole thing. Um, when uh, when we were interviewing Great Danes, uh, we discovered that Tim Hook uh, from the band, from the duo, has this amazing ability to just play any song. I mean, he, if he hears it once, he can essentially play it. If he knows the song he's able to play it on guitar. So we kind of tested him a little bit earlier on the show. Yeah. And uh, in all honesty, I that was not planned. No. Um, I, I, it kind of just came to me to kind of, yeah, yeah, see if he could do it. And he did it. And uh, and it was awesome. Right in the front row, friend Oscar Broughton just right. started singing all the lyrics. <laughs> Knew was, all the lyrics, which was insane. I yeah. didn't think anybody was going to be able to do that. But that was also, that was, oh, I love the uh, Piffle rounds where, the real answer, and this is part of the reason why we're going to be changing for season three because it is so difficult and rare for us to be able to do this is to find uh, not just a you know a, the question, but then also the answer to that that is weirder than anything that someone can write, and yeah. also that more people go like, oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, and and you <laughs> can hear. I mean, when Josh reads that answer off, everyone laughs. Like, yeah. and 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 uh, the Great Danes, they say, well, I, I that know can't be true. It can't yeah. be. It can't be can't be possibly um, true. And then when when it's revealed as the real answer, everyone's like, oh wow, that, <laughs> that's where Broomfool of Asha comes from. Um, and now I've got the song stuck in my head again. Which you know what, there were songs. I guess. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, there you go. That is the year two in review. Piffle year two in review. Say it's been a long one. Three times fast. It's been a good run. And uh, we are excited to revamp the fuck out of this show and, and get started again. Season premiere, season three, October, October 24th, 24th at CCB. Comedy Cafe Berlin. Uh, we look forward to seeing all of you uh, there. If you're in Berlin, definitely come out. If you're not in Berlin, get some of the- I think it's a cheap. Yeah, why? It's a show. Why are you staying over there? Why don't you just come over? Yeah, you know, and and Hello. if you contribute to the uh, Kickstarter, you could actually get like it, tickets included exactly. for that show. You could get you donate enough. You get you, you those tickets would be free. Hello, wow, Hello. guys, so good. Uh, that's a good reminder. Actually, there's just like a couple days left on the Kickstarter. I mean, we met our goal, but we're still trying to kick it into uh, to stretch goals. And uh, there's definitely, I mean, if if we can, if, if we if Noah can get the stretch goals then we because i'm helping him get the gear can make that theater fucking super sweet yeah boy so uh we will be back next week with another piffle short and back at the end of the month with a brand new episode of piffle we hope you enjoy this clip show thanks for listening we'll speak to you next week